My name's Simon and I'm an alcoholic. That's what you're supposed to say, right? But am I an alcoholic? I don't really know. I mean, what is an alcoholic and does it even matter? And does giving myself that label actually do more harm than good? All I know is that I used to drink far too much alcohol and it was having a really damaging effect on my life. I've been trying to stop drinking for over two years now and although I've had long periods of sobriety of up to six months at a time, I keep on falling off the wagon which I'm finding really frustrating. I know that there's a lot of other people out there who want to stop drinking as well and who also find it really difficult. So I've been out to meet lots of people who have successfully stopped drinking to find out why they stopped, how they went about doing it and what their lives are like now that they're alcohol free. I was what society might call just a social drinker. I'd have two or three drinks midweek. I might get drunk on occasion on the weekend, but I was never an alcoholic. I never did anything too crazy. But when I got into my mid thirties, I realized that this habit of drinking just one or two drinks a night was starting to slow me down. I'd put on some weight. My skin started to look weathered. I wasn't productive. I wasn't sleeping very well. I stopped drinking not because of some quote unquote problem. I was just bored of it. Bored of the hangovers, bored of the tiredness, bored of the lethargy, bored of not being my best self in many ways. More and more dancing weekenders were coming along and that was an occasion where I would drink while I was getting ready to go out, drink while I was out, come back, or oh, have a drink when I've, uh, the dancing night's over. So it was just a, uh, it was just a build up. It started off actually just that I was doing Dry January um, and then I felt that I was actually at the end of the month I, I thought I'll carry on and because I, I felt so great after uh, it had made such a difference to me. I was never someone who drank a little glass of wine here, a little glass of wine there. I was always someone who was sort of preconditioned from my uh, younger years to drink heavily on a Friday and a Saturday like heavily. So I used to run pubs, run a bar, and um, that was between the ages of 18 and 28. And it was uh, a quiet night, it would have been five pints probably. And uh, if we were really going for it, it would be like finish work at 11, having had five, and then go on to like four in the morning. I knew that it was robbing me of the, the benefits of life really, and the things that I really, really should be enjoying. It was robbing me of time, you know, time with my family, time with my children, time for myself, time for relationships. I think I got to the point where I started to really question, have I got a problem here? Am I not normal? And it was an internal dialogue that had kind of been creeping around my mind for quite some time. When I call it my black cloud, when my black cloud appears, you know, the depression, and I just want to block it out, block, block out all those negative, horrible feelings of depression and anxiety. You know, that's really difficult because I just, the only way I feel that I can do that is, you know, by having a drink. But obviously I know that that's only a short term solution because the alcohol and the drink, or the alcohol and the depression and the, and the anxieties, for me, it's just intertwined. So I think I definitely self-medicated my anxiety with alcohol but the alcohol also made it worse. So it was a vicious cycle. So I think it started with anxiety, but I think obviously alcohol heightens that. So my, my levels of anxiety just sort of steadily got worse the more I was drinking. My anxiety was through the roof. I was drinking about seven or eight bottles of wine a week. I was only taking one or two nights off. I remember when I first started morning drinking, um, and that's when I realised, okay, that there must be some kind of issue here. Yeah, I was trying to get the shakes as well. I was definitely physically addicted to the end. Other people don't understand what goes on in here and what goes on in here. You know, when you're lying in bed, hungover, sobbing your eyes out, which was me most weekends, you know, with all the guilt and fear and feeling like I'd lost the emotions around like getting excited for things, things that you should get excited for, like seeing friends and family. I wasn't feeling those same emotions and, you know, cognitively you're like, I should be excited about this. Like, why am I not feeling excited? Um, and then recognize like, actually, maybe this is all related to alcohol. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. And just, if you keep doing the same thing, 
over and over again, you can't expect a different result. So you gotta do something else to get a different result. Right at the end, so it really progressed um, quite quickly over two years. So right at the end, it would probably be about three bottles of wine a day and some spirits on top of that. It was just taking over my life and it was out of control. So I decided to, the only way how to do it was to stop it completely. To be honest, there was no other option for me. It got to such a bad state where it was either probably die or or stop drinking. So it was quite clear options that I had. I think I just got to a point where I wasn't willing to live the way I was anymore. And I knew that in order to be happy and to become sort of the person that I wanted to be, um, then alcohol had, had to go basically. I've woke up and I don't want to be, this isn't who I am, this isn't the type of person that I want to be. Um, I'm 34 years old, I should know better. And it was a clear cut decision for me that something has to change. And I just stopped drinking and thought, that's it. It's hard to underestimate the damaging effects that alcohol can have on people's lives. It causes anxiety, depression, weight gain, and loads of other health issues. Even a moderate drinker may do things under the influence that they regret the next day. But even more heartbreaking than that is that it robs people of their precious time, it destroys connections with their loved ones, and it erodes people's happiness. When I really stop and think about it, I can't believe that this stuff is legal. But what I've learned is that you don't have to be a stereotypical alcoholic to have a desire to stop drinking. It affects such a wide range of normal people, people with jobs, people with families, and people with responsibilities. But alcohol is an addictive substance and it's so heavily ingrained in our society. So is it really possible to stop drinking? I knew that I had to give up alcohol probably and, and really started seriously trying to about three years before I actually managed to do it. Because it was so heavily ingrained in my life, it was such a big part of my life. I found it really hard because I knew, I tried to kid myself that I could drink like a normal person for probably about two years, um, I quickly realised that I couldn't. The biggest challenge was, was that mentality of hitting the 28 days or hitting the 90 days and just like almost looking to that as like a, the next time I can have a drink. But it was just thinking about, oh gosh, I've got a holiday coming up soon and it was all these uh, looming over you. Thinking, well, how am I going to cope on holiday? I will never be able to go on holiday and not drink was what this part of my brain was saying. I remember I was at a bar one night in West Hollywood in California and my friend said, oh, I'm going to the bar, you want a drink? And I said, yeah, soda water. And he said, oh yeah, okay. And he went to the bar and he came back and he gave me the drink and he kind of looked suspicious. And I went and I could smell that he'd put alcohol in it. And I was like, did you put alcohol in this? And he said, oh, yeah, I did. And I was in my head, I was like, I just can't believe that my friend doesn't support me in this. But to him, it was like, what are you doing? You're not drinking, are you crazy? But to me, it was like, no, this is something that I really want to I really want to do. So it was interesting that some friends in the beginning were uncomfortable with me not drinking and wanted me to just, you know, get over this silly mistake I was making and drink, be part of the tribe. I think social situations are really hard. Um, I think going to a festival this summer was probably one of the hardest because I associated that with um, drinking. And we go out for dinner and you'd be sitting there and seeing all these lovely wine glasses going by and people sitting and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And it was, and I found like the conversation was still turned in. So it, it was, um, it was tough. I would say the social anxiety, that was hard. Um, learning how to go into a party or a pub or a gig without a drink at first was really difficult. A lot of the things that I love about you know, doing my social life, our music, so I'm going to gigs, I'm playing ukulele in pubs, I'm going to music festivals, and that all obviously comes with standard pint in your hand. Um, so the biggest change for me was thinking, how on earth am I gonna be able to live that life and not drink? It's just gonna be dull as dishwater. Stopping drinking is hard, 
really hard. When I look at the place that alcohol has had in my life, I wonder if I'll ever be able to enjoy my life without it. I mean, how am I going to be able to relax? How am I going to have fun? And how am I going to socialise without drinking? And it feels like alcohol is everywhere. You can't even walk down the street in the UK without seeing the presence of alcohol somewhere. But it must be possible to stop drinking because millions of people have done it before. I'm not the first to try and I certainly won't be the last. So what do I need to do differently to stop drinking once and for all? The number one thing that really helped me was finding out that other people were going through the same thing. So equipping myself with more knowledge, going and reading books, finding stuff on YouTube, listening to podcasts. And the more I started reading books and educating myself, the more my mindset shifted towards alcohol. And I think that was a huge thing for me. The key elements that helped me were, um, you know, writing down my whys the first day to remind myself why I'm doing this. Um, loading my fridge with alcohol-free options, alcohol-free beer, alcohol-free wine, tonic, um, you know, slow flavored uh, syrup to pour in my tonic so I could still feel like I was having a gin and tonic. Uh, for me, I, uh, if I go out now, I have something like a slimline tonic um, or a ginger beer, but I always ask for it in a wine glass so it looks nice as the ceremony of it rather than it just comes in this tumbler. I started, you know, with cutting down first of all and starting to to fill the gap that I was creating um, with new things um, did a lot of work on myself and that sort of stuff if I was feeling like I could drink for Scotland I would just uh, either go for a run and come back and have um, a non-alcohol beer and the other, the other one for me was, was sort of relaxation. So I had quite a lot of music on a lot, a lot more than I usually would. And I've found that really good. And, and also lots of baths. I know it's a cliche, but literally like just one day at a time. And um, like today I'm not having a drink. I didn't have a drink yesterday and I'm going to try my hardest not to tomorrow, you know? So, and that's, that's the way I look at it. Meeting all these people has made me realize that there's loads of tools and techniques out there to stop drinking alcohol. It's all about finding the right strategy for you and your situation, from reading books about it or writing down your reasons for stopping, going out running or finding new ways to relax. And alcohol-free drink alternatives definitely seem to be a popular choice. And from my own experience, they certainly help to take the edge off when those cravings occur. And the availability of these in supermarkets and bars is going up and up, and they're really starting to taste like the real thing. And education seems to be another key factor. Learning more about how alcohol works and learning from other people's experience. Understanding that we're not on our own doing this because sometimes it really does feel that way. But instead, becoming part of a community of other people who are striving to achieve the same thing. One of those communities which I found and became part of is called One Year No Beer. The first thing I did was actually sign up for One Year No Beer that had helped me kind of cross that line. I knew, like I thought, yeah, I should probably stop. And then luckily I came across them at the same time. It was like, actually, this is exactly what I need. 28 days to give me a clear cut. Um, so through them, I found an amazing support network full of really positive and encouraging people that were able to provide great advice. And what you get is a community, a community of like-minded people who are all going through the same thing at roughly the same time. And they're there to cheer you on, they're there to support you. It really helps to know that there are people on the same journey, like with yourself, it's like a, even the same day, I think, or maybe the day after or whatever, just to have that camaraderie, you know, because you, you know that people have experienced the same thing as you. Reading people's stories, knowing that there are other people out there that are in the same situation as myself. To know there are people out there, you can just say, oh, mate, I'm struggling, or, you know, today I'm feeling this, or, you know, what am I going to do? And the support that comes back is unbelievable. You know, it's like, yeah, I've been there, I was there yesterday, and it's about just sitting with it and sitting with the feeling that comes up, the craving or whatever, but knowing there are other people out there like rooting, rooting for you. I'd done dry January before. You know, I proved to myself, oh, I can do 30 days with no alcohol. But once you start to go a little bit further, it opens you up to emotions and feelings that you probably have numbed out for many years of your life. And I wasn't, I wasn't equipped with how 
I should deal with those. And hearing how other people had felt similar things just made me take a breath and think, okay, this is, this is normal um, and I can get through this. There are loads of other communities and support groups out there too. On Facebook and Reddit, you can join groups for free to quickly and easily connect with people. On Instagram, there's a whole community of alcohol-free ambassadors. Or starting your own blog can be a way to share your story and keep yourself accountable. Or you could pay to be part of a structured program where they'll give you advice, tools and coaching to help you achieve your goal to stop drinking. So one of the things the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge community has created is this community of people who are like, yes, look at me, I'm up at 7 a.m. this morning, here's a photo of me on a hike. Hey, here's me with my girlfriend having a non-alcoholic dinner. And people share the photos, people go like, 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 they support, they go, wow, that's amazing. And then they get inspired by other members. And change occurs amongst other people. So when you have accountability and you have people doing this in a fun, supportive way, that's when change really becomes possible. Some people may find that they need even more support, especially if they have a physical dependency on alcohol. For people like this, there are additional services available like Alcoholics Anonymous, outreach programs and rehab. If you think that you have a physical dependency on alcohol, it is really important that you seek professional help. There was an incident at work and the MD took me to one side and she said that they would um, help me with rehab, so residential rehab which I then decided to go to the next week. For me, it was a necessity. I had to be taken out of my environment, which was pretty much the four walls of my flat, um, a taxi and work at that point. Um, and I had to be completely taken out of my environment in order to not have any temptation around me and be with people that understood what I was going through. So yeah, it definitely saved my life. So after that 28, 30 days, I did join a 12 step program. I would say that I was quite reluctant to at first, but I knew that it worked because I'd seen other people do it. I had tried to join a 12 step program before rehab, um, but I didn't understand the language that they used. It seemed a bit culty to me in all honesty, um, but then I found the right one and met some great people through it. And I just kept that contact with that community going um, and the same, people from rehab, um, we, we became friends and that really, really massively helped. Through all of these stories about people who have successfully stopped drinking alcohol, there's something which I think is really interesting. No matter where people are on the spectrum, from people who have had a physical dependency on alcohol to people who have just fed up of the occasional hangover, there's something that they all have in common. They're all part of a community of other people who are there to help and support each other. They've all found a tribe that they can belong to, whether that's online or face-to-face. -face. There's loads of communities and support groups out there, so it's about finding the right one for you. For me, a new tribe that I'm now part of is a mindfulness group that I set up myself a couple of months ago because mindfulness is a really important part of my own journey. But doing it together with other people makes it much easier to do, it makes it much more fun, and it makes it much more powerful. I think the community is the most important part of quitting drinking. If you have people around you who are also quitting drinking or who have quit and they're supporting you and it's fun and it's positive, then change becomes possible. If you're relying on brute willpower and you're going, oh no, I have to quit drinking, oh, I'm alone, then that change becomes particularly difficult. But I think there's something which is often overlooked and is a vital part of the puzzle. What's the reason for drinking in the first place? For me, I now know that the reason for my drinking was because I had anxiety and depression and a low sense of self-esteem. And I was using alcohol to cover this up. I was using alcohol like an anesthetic to numb out these negative feelings that I had for myself. But the alcohol just made it worse. And it was like a downward spiral that was then really, really difficult to stop. Stopping drinking alcohol for a lot of people, including myself, is just the start of the journey, but it's a journey that can lead to a much happier and a much more fulfilling life. For me, life is simply better without alcohol. So I was drinking 
you know, for many years, for most of my adult life. And then the moment that I decided to take a 30 day break, which then turned into eight years now, was the moment that my entire life changed. God, I can't, I can't even describe. It's like a million times better. Physically, it's, it's obvious, you know, I feel better. I wake up and I'm fresh, you know, fresh eyed, got a fresh mindset. I can, the first couple of months, I thought, oh, it's amazing. I can brush my teeth. I can smell my shampoo again. I'd lost all sense of smell, you know. Everyone just keeps saying, oh, you look so much better. My skin's so much better. My sleep is so much better. It's really helped with my anxiety. So I have more energy. I've got more focus, greater clarity. I've started businesses. I have improved relationships. I'm happier, I'm fit. I look the way nature intended me to look. People take a break from alcohol and they think they're just going to remove the obvious things like the nausea and the headaches. But you unleash like your best possible self. It's like a gateway to like the real you because when you get that time back and your energy back and your mojo back, you can do anything and everything that you've always wanted to do. Suddenly all those goals and those dreams that have been slipping through your fingers for the last 10 years, like they're in play. It feels like you're living a double life. just this upward spiral of goodness from one simple change. It's, just, it's freedom. Freedom to be able to pick my daughter up from work when she phones me and I can go and pick her up because I'm not over the limit. It's um, actually having the patience to deal with the kids when they get you know, they're just, they get noisy or they bump themselves or they want me to play with them. It's just having the, it's just not having the hangover or um, just having the, just, just having more of a presence of mind to, to be with them, you know. I think that's the best thing for me. So my time is used in a much better way and it's, it's going to fuel me in different places in life that I wouldn't have gotten to if I were drinking. Because I used to say to people, oh, I can't do anything in the evenings really. And that was during the week. Uh, and that was because once I'd had a couple of glasses of wine, I just didn't feel like doing anything. Whereas now I've signed up to uh, an Amdram club. I've just I've just done my second class of yoga at eight o'clock on a Wednesday night. I mean, no way would I ever have gone out at eight o'clock to do something like that. So that's, that's lovely. Anxiety is a huge part of my story and I suffer, I used to suffer quite badly, but now I've got the coping mechanisms in place, which don't include alcohol. My clarity of thinking, so much better. I laugh a lot again. Um, I'm just genuinely happier. It's just freedom to do within reason what I want, when I want, whenever I want. I'm going to yoga all the time now. I'm reading books all the time now. I'm spending nice time with my husband instead of, you know, potentially arguing because we're drunk and thinking stupid. The best thing is when you wake up the next day and you don't have a hangover and you're listening to all your friends that are kind of moaning about their hangovers and you just think, oh, that's why I didn't drink last night and I still had just a good, as good a time. Oh, you know, I went clubbing the other week with some mates and all I had was two bottles of water and I danced my little heart away. So I was up in Blackpool a couple of weeks ago. I went to uh, an Irish bar and they've got like a little stage that people are dancing on. One amazing woman, how she was doing it in her heels and clearly drunk, I don't know. But I was up there as well, dancing, and I really wanted to shout, you know, I'm sober, I don't need to drink to do this. Would I have thought that, you know, six months ago when I started this journey, or eight months ago, that I would have ever done that? Hell no. You know, I haven't got to hide away and, um, and be dull. Uh, I still enjoy live music and I, and I go there. And then it just starts to get a bit silly, uh, maybe around one clock in the morning where people are now falling around and then I guess what I drive home I've met some really amazing people made some new friends um, you know and yeah it's 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 been really positive um, and actually a lot less scary than I thought it might be the whole social media putting yourself out there it's actually been been a really good experience really positive experience it's this endless new world that you have available to you now that you never feel like crap um, on the weekends. Um, and you have all this extra time in the evenings that you might have spent just in the pub chatting to people you don't know. 
people are now got this level of awareness about what alcohol actually does to the body and how it's slowing them down and how it's affecting their goals and their dreams in life. So with that increased education, increased awareness, becomes new ways of actually having fun and socializing and feeling part of a tribe, but doing it in a healthy, positive way. My life has completely changed, um, but in, in a good way. Um, but there, there, are, there are tough times, but, but on the whole, it's, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Do I want to lead a good life? or do I want to lead an, an, an amazing life? And, and I think the last, you know, particularly the, this, this stage now that I'm at now, now I'm past the 90 days again, it's, I feel like I'm living 100% and I'm living it maximum and I've, things are happening, like you're put in the right place. I don't want to get too like woo woo about it, but I think the universe or, or serendipity or whatever you want to call it, I'm in the right place at the right time and those opportunities would have been missed. They would have been missed a year ago. Wow, what a difference being alcohol free makes to people's lives. It's amazing. Who said that being sober was boring? So many people are terrified that they won't be able to enjoy their lives or have fun without alcohol. But every single person that I've spoken to has said that without question, their lives are much better since they ditched the booze. The improved connections in people's lives is what's really stood out for me, especially connections with their families and their loved ones, but also connections with their work and their social lives. This encourages me personally to continue my own alcohol-free journey, and I hope that it gives you some inspiration too. More and more people are coming to this conclusion themselves, and it feels like the alcohol-free revolution has well and truly started. So is society at large going to catch on to the benefits of being alcohol free? I decided that since I've been going to all my friends' parties where they've all been drinking, I thought they can come to my party and they can try being alcohol free. So it's a bit of an experiment. I don't know how they'll find it. Um, some of my friends, as a result of uh, me not drinking, have been inspired to do Stoptober uh, and some of them are carrying on with that. Uh, so there are a few people that aren't drinking anyway. Um, but but lots of people are trying alcohol-free beer and stuff for the first time and the alcohol-free cocktails and yeah it's an interesting experiment. Well the first festival we did a year and a half ago at Bermondsey Square in South London. And now this is our fifth right? This is our fifth one. So what's happened is, is everyone wanted one and so we've tried really hard to do them. So we've done them in London and in Glasgow. And they've really grown so I think in our first, first festival we had 20, 25 drinks brands and now we have 60 at this one. So there's definitely a big shift in the number of brands but also the interest from people, those who are sober curious and want to try drinks. And we also have over these two days we have a full program of events like talks, panel discussions, uh, cocktail making demonstrations, all sorts. Look at this. <laughs> this is a festival about people who don't drink or really want to drink a lot, lot less. So this wouldn't have happened a couple of years ago. This is proof that it's a massive trend. And one in three 18 to 24 year olds now doesn't drink at all, which is staggering. What we realised quite early on when I first gave up drinking and when we first set up Club Soda was people wanted to know what to drink instead. And actually, uh, four years ago when we launched, there wasn't many options. But suddenly they've started to emerge and everybody wants to try them. So we thought we'd bring all the best brands under one roof so people could try, find a new favourite tipple and realise that there were options out there that they may never have thought of before. So I go out and socialise and I drink alcohol for alternatives. We're at a festival at the moment, the Mindful Drinking Festival. There must be 60 or 70 different types of alcohol for alternatives. They're becoming more mainstream, they're more popular. So I think what's going to happen is that in years to come it will just become completely normal. And to the point where, do you remember when we used to have to describe ourselves as a non-smoker? And now we don't do that because most people are non-smokers. So I think it will get to the point where you don't have to describe yourself as a non-drinker because most people won't drink. We're the cool kids. We are ahead of the game. For the first time maybe ever in our lives, we're at the forefront of something really special. And in a few years' time, people are going to look back at you and go, you were ahead of the game. You knew in advance what we only now know. And that's a massive game changer. Making this documentary and meeting all of these people has been nothing short of breathtaking. 
I've been blown away by the strength and the courage that people have shown to overcome their difficulties and to stop drinking once and for all. And I'm so happy that it's becoming more and more socially acceptable to be alcohol free. Stopping drinking isn't easy, but what I've learned is that it is possible and it does get easier with time. If you're thinking about stopping yourself, then why not give it a try? You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. It can, it can feel like a long and arduous journey, but lots of people have done it before and there's many groups out there that can give you help and support so you don't have to do it alone. Alcohol creates so many barriers for people to live happy and meaningful lives. But what's clear from everyone that I've spoken to is that being alcohol free can help us all to be happier, healthier and more successful in our lives. If you'd like to get in touch with any of the organisations that we've mentioned in this video, then we'll link, leave the links below. And finally, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been involved for your time and for sharing your stories.